Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Thomas. I'm a metrology scientist at Lumetrix. And today we're going to demonstrate how to do some measurements on semiconductor samples. I have a bare silicon wafer and then I have another sample that has a bonded material to it. So you would start by taking your sample and loading it into whatever your measurement array or apparatus is. And for this system, it's a demonstration system, we're already set up to just load whatever sample. It's a flat surface, but you may have a vacuum chuck or something else that you would use to help restrain your sample. And already you can see um, the reflection off the top surface and then the reflection off the back surface of the silicon. Um, but what we're seeing here is that the default setting in the system has a refractive index of 1, uh, which is for air, not silicon. So the optical thickness or the total path length through the sample is a little nonsensical. And so the way you would adjust this is you go in and you tell it what the refractive index is. So in this case, we're uh, silicon at a telecom wavelength, so we're about 3.53 uh, for the refractive index. And then you can see that now the uh, software then goes and calculates what your total material thickness is. And for a six inch wafer or a 150 millimeter wafer like we have demonstrated here, you can actually see that the total material thickness is uh, about 675 microns, uh, which uh, it, per the standard specifications, usually gonna be 675 plus or minus a few microns. So this is a really good example of determining how thick your wafer is. Um, now, with multiple probes or additional setups, you could also use this system to determine wafer bow uh, or other parameters of uh, what that you're curious about with your starting wafer stock. Okay. Our uh, next sample is a piece of silicon or a uh, eight inch silicon wafer that has a piece of uh, bonded glass on top of it. And uh, one thing we can do with our system is actually determine you know, how thick these bond defects are. So if you're to take a look at the sample, you can see for the most part, there's no, no bubbles in there, but there's some definitely clear bond defects that are on the sample. And so what we should be able to determine with the uh, OptiGauge system is how tall those bond voids are. And then also what the total thickness of the silicon plus the, the oxide material on top is. So when we've placed the new sample on the test apparatus and we can already see that there's multiple peaks uh, which tells us that there are multiple films uh, present so what you would do in this case is there's multiple layers so you need to increase the number of layers um, and we can increase to three because we do know that some areas do have a bond defect so we'll, this will help us with that now there's also some additional um, reflections in the system right now. Um, what can happen with these high index materials is they'll act like a mirror and you end up with some ghost reflections in there. Uh, it's really a particular to, to those high index, and low index, uh, multiple film stacks, but with a, an appropriate amount of engineering optimization, you can often ferret those out and determine what they are. <clears throat> So I've increased the number of layers to accommodate the number of peaks we have. But like I was saying, there is a, uh, a ghost peak in there uh, that we're measuring and we're seeing. And the reason why I say that it's a ghost peak is because the optical thickness is uh, very nearly identical between the two peaks. It's, it's showing 149 microns between the two. Um, unless you design something to be exactly the same, you're really not going to see that. It's kind of an a, a odd occurrence. And so oftentimes that's what you would use to determine whether or not it was a ghost peak or not if you're seeing multiple repeat measurements of the same thickness. Okay. An additional feature of the optic gauge system is that there is a targeting light uh, in a red, from a red laser source that can show you roughly where you're targeting. Um, so it's hard to see on the actual sample, but if you were to look um, on the uh, the apparatus, you can see this red dot, and that's approximately where your measurements are being taken. So now we're gonna use that red dot as a guide over on the sample where our little bond void is. All right. 
and we see that there's some additional reflections going on. So now I need to do some additional adjustments to determine where the backside silicon surface is plus that void uh, area. So I expect there's only going to be three layers here because you're going to have the, the oxide layer that's on top. There's an air gap, which is the bond void, and then there's also the silicon below. Adjusting my indices of refraction. Okay, so now I've, we're measuring over the bond void on the sample. Now it's actually a rather large void. Um, you can tell this because there's a lot of uh, uh, reflective rings in the sample on the sample itself that you can see with the naked eye. Uh, and then in measuring it, we see that the optical thickness is pretty thick, and it's actually about as thick as the whole layer is tall. So there's probably a really big particle on the surface that was bonded over. And um, so what we're seeing is like about a 150 micron particle or something in there that's separating that surface from the other. And it's a rather large area void, so it's um, not unreasonable that the sample would be able to withstand that amount of deflection. And then you're again, we're measuring all the way through the sample. We're measuring through the glass on top. We're measuring through that gap, uh, uh, that bond void gap, and then we're measuring through the silicon sample. So we're seeing about a millimeter total thickness uh, for everything all together there. So thank you for watching our demonstration on the Lumetrix Optic H2 system. Uh, for your semiconductor applications, so though, this could, system may be used for wafer bow measurements, for uh, bond defect measurements and uh, quantification. Uh, you could use it as a profilometer for determining how flat your wafer surface is, or if you want to know your incoming stock, uh, how, what the features of that silicon wafer are, you can do it there. And there's a bunch of other applications, so if you're interested or you want to know further information, please contact us at engineeringatlumetrics.com or sales at lumetrics.com, or you can visit our website at lumetrics.com. L-U-M-E-T-R-I-C-S.